okay, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time. And uh, it's a lot of information, so I've been hesitant to do it. But we're gonna give it a crack, okay? So we're gonna build a staircase over there. We basically have a situation where we come down to a landing and come down. And so we gotta do a couple things. We gotta determine the rise of our ramp, of our treads, sorry, the rise of our stringer. And we also have to locate the landing so that these can meet up and be at the correct height. So no matter, anytime I'm building stairs, um, I always draw it out so I don't fuck up, quite frankly. It's just a lot to wrap your mind around, a lot of deductions, and if you don't have a map written out, it's easy to, to, to blow a number. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to measure the height from the top of the second floor to the top of the first floor. So from plywood to plywood. That number is 119 and 5 eighths. And so we're gonna take that number and we're gonna divide it by 18. That gives me six and five eighths. So that's that's no good. Try it again. It's no good because code, at least here in Michigan, you need to be between seven and three eighths and eight and one eighth rise so oh I keep messing that up let's try 16 okay seven and a half inch rise so that gives us 16 16 rises so we have counting out the rises Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eighth rise puts us on the landing. And then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 puts us on the ground. So it's important to know that our first step is gonna be hanging off the landing. And also, our first rise is actually the floor system itself. So we start on the second rise. Like that. Okay. And you get a system loosely looks like this. Numbering's backwards, but we use a piece of plywood, three quarter plywood glued, fastened to the stringer. But basically what happens is that when you cut your stringer, you actually end up with one less than what your math dictated because the extra rise is made up on the plywood, not on your stringer. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven treads, okay? Seven treads. And they're all gonna be seven and a half up. And for me, they're gonna be nine inches over. They're nine inches over because we have tread stock that's 10 and a quarter and what happens is you want to have an inch and a quarter nosing on the front of your step so i have three quarter riser material that'll go on the stringer first so that pushes the tread over two and a quarter but then once you put the next rise on it brings you back so as long as you're not putting your tread on and then putting your riser on top of it and then putting your riser on the front of it. As long as you're doing adding to both sides, it, it equals out. You add to three quarter here, but then you take away three quarter when you put the next one on. I don't know why that confuses some people, so I thought it was worth mentioning. Anyways, we're an inch and a quarter in. We got three quarter riser or uh, riser material. And that leaves us with basically a nine inch notch right here so when I cut my stringer when I cut this right here up to my next this will be seven and a half this will be nine and that's what forms the rise and run basically of my stringer the next problem that we usually have is 
This has always been an issue when you have a landing, is a lot of people like to actually, instead of butting their stringer in, they actually like to build their landing big and then land on it. So you get full bearing with your stair system when you, you land on the landing fully. But the problem is that your next set of stairs gets pushed over that amount. And so instead of having stairs that kind of meet in the same point, you get a situation where the landing is built underneath here. And so your stairs don't begin right here, right? You get one step that goes down further than the next one. And aesthetically that always looks bad. So I think the only way to do it is to have them both meet on the landing. So this one's actually gonna end at the landing and hang on hangers. And then this one will hang on plywood the same way as before. So you get a situation where both of the treads are pretty close to being stacked on top of each other like this. All right. So now we have to locate our landing. And since we know that all of our risers, or sorry, all of our runs are nine inches, we basically get a bunch of nine inch numbers here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times nine, which is 63. Plus we have our three quarters that were on there. So 63 and three quarters. So when you start with your stair hole, what you're going to do is you're gonna measure off the front of your header, 63 and three quarters. And you're gonna, so from the header of your stair landing to the front of your new landing that you're building, it has to be 63 and three quarters. That way your tread can terminate right here and terminate right here. So this, this distance here is known. And then whatever's left over from 63 and three quarters, whatever's left over to the wall that you're attaching it to, that's just, that's what determines the size of your landing. So, for me, I measured off that header 63 and three quarters over, and I plumbed that up that it's 63 and three quarters from here to there in a straight line right I made that mark so I measure over I make that mark on the ground on the plate and then I can measure from here to the wall that tells me how wide my landing needs to be really the width the width this way isn't as important as long as it's within code a lot of codes say you have to have like three feet from the nosing to the wall once it's finished, we're over that, so I'm not concerned. It's just an arbitrary number. The important thing is the relationship of the front of the landing to the front of your lower landing and your upper landing. By the way, when you're calculating stairs and using a construction master calculator, it's good to convert everything to decimals. So you can take 119, 5 eighths, Turn that into a decimal and then divide it by 16. And you can see that the number that you get is actually not seven and a half. It's actually a little bit smaller. And while that doesn't mean much as a single number when you have it eight times, it can change the, the height of the landing by, you know, a quarter inch or so. So it's important that we're using this number times eight and we get 59.81 now had we done the same process uh, 119 divided by 16 see we get seven and a half times that by eight and you get 59 and 13 16 okay so it does save the fraction of a decimal in there because uh, it's just a weird glitch. Eight times seven and a half should not equal 13 sixteenths. So it's saving the remainder in the 
in the stored memory, but obviously seven and a half, see if we just put that in. It's 60 inches, right? <laughs> but when you do this here, So don't let that confuse you. It's kind of a glitch on the on the calculator. This is the true number that we want. If you use decimals, it becomes very obvious. So we're going to set our landing at 59.81 inches, which is 59 and 13 sixteenths. So that's going to be from the top of the plywood to the top of the landing. Okay, so that's now we have our, our depth here. And we also have our height. Okay. Now it's worth noting as well that you have one more option here. I previous example I had wrote 69 and three quarters because I was adding the plywood in there. But you can also shorten your first tread. So you can shorten this by three quarters and then just not put a three-quarter board on there. Sometimes people do that when they have carpeted stringers. There's no reason to like put a one by on here when you're just gonna carpet it anyways. So instead of this being nine, it becomes eight and a quarter. And then once you put your first riser on, it goes back to nine when you're installing it to here, if this was eight and a quarter. Um, so if you're not gonna put a second one by over top of your three quarter board, then you wanna do this method. You wanna use eight and a quarter. If you're planning on putting a three-quarter board on here, then you need to consider that into your number. It's gonna be 63 and three-quarters. You're cutting this down because you're not planning on putting a three-quarter board on here, then your number's gonna be 63. And that's actually what we're doing on this particular job because I know they're not gonna put another one by on here. In fact, if they want it to be a finished staircase, a lot of times they'll just use like, uh, like a thin laminate, like a piece of eighth inch, you know, one side sand and it doesn't really account for much it's not worth considering in your your measurements so anyways move on. okay we're gonna start marking out these stringers but it's important to check for the crown in your lumber you look down the edge and it's hard to see on this but it's a little bit curved this way so we want to make sure that the arch is facing upwards um, so this will be the notches on my stringers. Just make sure that you crown your stairs, crown your stringers before you cut them. So, leave myself a little reminder that's the top of the crown. So now I set up my stair gauges based on my two numbers, my rise of seven and a half, and my run of nine inches. So, put the edge of my stair gauge at nine. Put the other one at seven and a half. I actually cheated it in just a fuzz because if you recall, it was just a little bit under, just a little bit under seven and a half. And now we'll put that on the edge of our board. And it doesn't matter if you have the seven on this side and the nine on that side, it could be either side, as long as you're butting them into the board doesn't really matter all right so sharpen your pencil the more precise you are the better now I really try to use these jigs to like line up with the plane of my pencil line you can be sloppy here and you know like the materials beveled so if you slid your square to here you'd actually be losing quite a bit of uh of length in your in your stair stringer and every time you do that eighth inch you're going to come up short at the end your stairs are going to be leaning so really when you have rounded material like often we do try to bring your stair gauge into the plane of that pencil every single time you make your mark you should come right there now we're just going to go down the board and 
mark out a bunch of these. Every time trying to make the plane of my gear gauge line up. Okay, now we got them all marked out. We can start counting them off. So I will square back here. This will be my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's my seventh one. So this will get squared back. Let's do that now. Okay, I accidentally deleted this part of the uh, video somehow. I don't know how, but. Um, I want to show you guys how to calculate the instructions on your, or the deductions on your bottom step. So because you have tread thickness on top of your stringer, you have to make sure that your stringer is cut. Oh, uh, what's the best way to explain? Okay, so your normal rise is seven and a half. So if I put an inch and a half on here and an inch and a half on here, it stays seven and a half from tread to tread. However, you're not putting a tread on the ground on the first floor, so you have to shrink this amount. So when you cut this, it has to be cut an inch and a half smaller. So as I put my tread on the top, it'll be seven and a half to the floor. So I can't set this at seven and a half above the floor and then put a tread on top of it. It'll end up being nine inches off the ground. That would be screwed up. So you have to keep that in mind. If you had uh, oak treads going on later, you would set this at one inch up so that after your oak treads go on, you end up at seven. Uh, you'd have to raise it up, you know, accordingly. So you just adjust for, if you're putting three quarter on here, an inch and a half on here, you just have to make sure that when it's finished, it's gonna add up to the correct rise, okay? So for me, again, I'm putting an inch and a half on here. So I'm gonna set this at six inches above the floor, okay? This is six inches. At the top, Every one of my treads is uh, nine inches. I'm leaving this three quarters short on the top because I'm not gonna put a riser on the plywood. I'll show you what that looks like because I've already finished that part. So you can see we get nine inches. Put three quarter on, three quarter on, you get nine inches. Nine inches, nine inches, nine inches, all the way up but I'm not putting three quarters on here. So I had to shorten this. For example, if this length right here, instead of being eight and a quarter, if that was nine, and then I put three quarter on it, it would be a super wide step. It would end up being nine and three quarters instead of nine again. The reason why I'm not putting three quarters on here is because these are just rough surfaces. They'll put, you know, eighth inch glue on over this, eighth inch glue on over that. And when it's all finished, it'll, it'll look like it's just you know, oak or wood or whatever material they use. So if you're planning on putting a finished riser on here that's of any thickness, you wanna make sure you do that deduction so that after your riser's on and your riser's on, it all comes out to be the same tread depth. Okay. And then the only other, again, See, this is set at six, so when my inch and a half goes on here, it'll be a seven and a half tread, just like all the rest for seven and a half rise. This attaches with a hanger. I'm gonna put a little hanger on there to carry that. Hanger, hanger. So when you cut your last tread, so your seven and a half, nine, bring that down, make a reference mark at your six inches. But I just square over here wherever two and a half inches hits or two and a quarter inches. So you could cut this at any flat spot that you want, but I just want to get full bearing with the hanger. Okay, so that's So the depth on the hanger is about two and a half inches. So that's why I just back cut it to two and a half. But yeah, that should account for everything. Now you just cut this. 
use this one stringer to trace all your other stringers. You can even cut this one, or cut it, stack it on top of another one, cut two at once, that's fine as well. But the important thing is that when you make a pattern, you don't lay this out multiple times. You only lay it out once, because it's small variations and where you held your, your square every time, a 16th, a 16th, 16th, it'll end up being off. So just use the same stringer and trace every single one of your additional stringers. Do you understand? Okay. All right, got my stringer cut. And now I wanna test it out before I make a bunch of these. So I'm gonna simulate plywood that's gonna be on the end of here to hang this. Do a couple quick calculations. More or less, when this goes on the staircase, Gonna butt into here and the stairs will hang off the plywood so we're going to subtract three quarters of an inch what I mean is we're going to hang our tape over the tape's going to hang over three quarters of an inch as if it were hooking on the three-quarter plywood then I'm going to measure my rise, which is seven and a half. And then I'm going to measure my tread to nine. So I'm hanging over three quarters, marking nine inches. Then take that and I will tack it onto my stringer. And do a trial run here. I'll do the same thing down at the bottom. I'll show you that in a second. Down at the bottom, I'm going to hang my tape over an inch and a half as if I were hooking on the tread because it's going to be from the top of my tread to the subfloor seven and a half inches. So hanging over an inch and a half, marking seven and a half. Like that. And I'll put a chunk of something tacked on the end to catch the fly with it. Okay, so we got one stringer just sat in there. Let's see if I put a chunk of inch and a half on there. Seven and five eighths, nine sixteenths. A little bit low, not bad though. Level, that's good. We're seven and a half there. So that's how it's gonna work out. That's gonna get a hanger. Support it. I would at the top. Now we just gotta cut a few more. All right, so this was my temporary board. I make sure not to lose this, so I'm actually going to make a piece of plywood. It's this length, about 15 and 7 eighths. It's a little angle on it. I'll make my plywood the same as this. Okay, now I'm going to mark this out. You'll see how, like, you gain just a little bit of the thickness of the lead. You can sharpen your lead very sharp eliminate some of that but my point for mentioning it is that when I make my cut I'm gonna make sure I take all of the visible line I'm not gonna leave any line showing that way I try to make sure this doesn't grow at all from copy to copy I'm just gonna mark this out two times all using the same pattern let's do it 
now that I have all three of my stringers cut, I'm going to make the plywood backer. Again, same as the uh, my template piece that I use to check it for level. So I will lay this out, snap a line on it. So three quarters up, I'll mark nine inches. That's as if I were hooking on the top of the sub floor. Seven and a half inches to the tread, nine inches to the stringer. So eight and a quarter. I'll snap a line on this at eight and a quarter. Sorry, I'm trying to make you dizzy guys. install my stringers I'll line them up with that line this will be the top that will ensure my step height is properly proportioned um, I'm also gonna lay these out where they belong in here one in the center one on each end and we're gonna nail this board up on the landing and install the stringers individually a lot of times you build stairs they'll Put the risers on and kind of assemble everything but with this particular system it, it's impossible for it to fit in there you can't drop it down and go under the plywood it's just too long so you have to install the stringers individually it's not a big deal but just uh trust me on that advice if you put your stairs together and then try to install them it's gonna go bad they won't fit well they'll fit in the hole but they won't drop into the hole. <laughs> okay, so now she's all laid out. Um, it's important to notice that the first layout is an inch and a half in. I'm gonna put an inch and a half nailer on the side of the stringers. I'll show you that in a second. And that's to allow spacing for drywall and a stringer to slip in behind there. And uh, I'll show you that anyways. First layout's an inch and a half in on each side. Next one centered. Now we'll nail this on. Then we'll nail our stringers to it. Here we go. So here's my three stringers. A two by four nailed to the side. And that's solely to make room for, if you can envision the studs, the framing there. They want to be able to slide the drywall clear past the stringer. They don't want to have to notch their drywall around this. They can just cut it in loose, slide it in there. And then so you got your drywall, which is a half inch or five eighths. And then they'll put their trim stringer on and that's another three quarters. So it ends up putting you at about an inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths, maybe a small gap, which you can either caulk or put your thinner stringers on. But this is using this two by four on the side of the stringers is deliberate for the finish that we're creating so i know it's going to be half inch drywall i know it's going to be a one by 12 trim stringer on the side of here so we're just setting it up for that if there was not going to be a trim stringer i would only put a strip of three quarter on here and that would leave enough room just for drywall to pass by so i just set a nail into the stringer six inches up Slide her in. Bring her down so she lines up there. We'll put an angle bracket hanger 
on there, plus it'll get nailed to the wall. Room for drywall and a trim stringer to go on here. Just start putting it together like that. So just shot some nails through the back of the three quarter. Angled some toenails up into the rafters, or sorry, into the studs. And now I just need to make sure that my nose and my stair stringer is going to be at the right height. Looks like we're about a quarter inch low right now. So I'm going to have to, I can either clamp, bring this up, or toenail it. Either way, we need to jack it up. We finish nailing it off. Alright, these little 400 pound wall clamps are so awesome for framing. You just move stuff, pull top plates together, pull studs straight, and then I just use them all the time. So I just jack that up a little bit. And we're within a 16. So. I'm gonna call that good. Send some nails in it the rest of the way, make sure it stays where it belongs, and then just install the next two. through put on all the risers um, using just some regular old pine these will get covered up with the veneer some kind of glue on finished one-sided you know oak or whatever they use for their finished strats or they'll get carpeted either way i don't have to worry about this this is not a finished product i'm using a stapler and glue um if this were a finished riser we wouldn't be doing it while we're rough framing for one uh, but I would use a 16 gauge nailer to put on a finished riser. So. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll put hangers on here, angle bracket, hanger, hanger. I like that the riser sits on there. I feel like this, uh, this is the way to go. And so I'm going to cover these up with risers, put my treads on. If these were temporary treads, I would just screw them down. Since I'm going to be keeping them here, um, I will glue them and we've got three inches in between the set of stairs here because there's a wall that comes up between the stairs so this will all get notched out as needed more or less the hangers are going to sit on here and go up to the next level identical set of stairs mostly and, uh, that's how you do it